Okay, folks, so here's uh, going to be a video on uh, rolling codes in car systems. Uh, I've seen a lot of questions about rolling codes lately, and I want to clear the air about how it works, how it can be exploited, and what cryptographers are doing to try to mitigate rolling code attacks. So... Um, First, we need to define our terms. There's two types of codes when it comes to um, key fobs. Static codes and rolling codes. A static code system sends out the exact same code every single time you press the lock or unlock button. This means that it's vulnerable to a very simple replay attack. As long as you are able to capture the code, whether it be with a Flipper Zero, whether it be with a Porta Pack H2 Plus Hacker F1, whether it be with any other uh, replay attack type of device, you would be able to use that to access a car. Now, rolling codes became standard on cars between 2004 and 2008. The first implementation of a rolling code system was in 1989 and some cars started getting it around 2002. Um, and so basically a rolling code is a system that has a newly generated cryptographically secure code that changes every time you press a button. So now I'm going to go into some of the technical aspects of the rolling code system. So as I said, a rolling code system will completely prevent a capture and replay attack. Now the technique used is there would be what's called a common pseudo-random number generator and this is in both the transmitter and the receiver now what this means is it uses an algorithm to create secure and random or as random as possible with as high entropy as possible keys so what happens is the transmitter sends the next code in sequence the receiver, which is the car, compares the next code to its expected next code. And then if they match, the car un unlocks or opens up, panics, whatever. Now, there's usually an implementation uh, that's kind of referred to as future codes. So, and there's, so with future codes, usually the system will allow up to 256 codes ahead of schedule in case the receiver missed transmitted key presses. So if the car is too far away and you press the button or whatever, so, so it won't desync your fob um, unless you exceed 256 codes that never got to the car. Now, um, a lot of cars now use, uh, in combination with the pseudo-random uh, uh, number gen key generator, they use something called HMAC, which is uh, called Hash-Based Message Authentication Code. And it's essentially um, a type of um, message authentication that uses a cryptographic uh, key. So it can verify data integrity. Now, when it comes to the rolling codes, um, as I said previously, it improves the security of, uh, of the system and it prevents simple replay attacks. So, there's a very common modulation of rolling codes called key lock, and that's with a Q, so K-E-E-L-O-Q. And so it has what's called an HCS301 microchip, and it's the most widely used system on rolling code garage, gate remote control, and car receivers. 
So the Keylock system uses a 66-bit um, key. So 34 bits are unencrypted, which constitutes a 28-bit serial number and a 4-bit button information um, number and a 2-status bit number. So repeat and low battery indicators. Then 32 bits are encrypted, which is the rolling code. So that's four bits of button information, two bits of extending counter values, 10 bits of the uh, discrimination value, which is the low 10 bits of the serial number, and then what's called a counter, a 16-bit counter. So in uh, uh, a resynchronization situation, the encrypted 32 bits are replaced with a 32-bit uh, seed value. Um, now, the problem is that this system has a vulnerability, and it has essentially been exploited successfully with something called a roll jam. So a roll, the roll jam was discovered in 2015. It was uh, demonstrated uh, during DEF CON 23. And basically, the way that it works is um, it circumvents uh, the rolling codes uh, by um, the following method. So the first time the victim presses their key fob, the roll jam jams the signal that sends out random noise on the two common frequencies used by cars and garage door openers, garage door openers, which is 315 megahertz and 433.92 megahertz. Now, at the same time, you are listening with a receiver or, or transceiver uh, that's tuned to pick up the fob signal uh, that the car was supposed to receive, and it records that code. When the first signal is jammed and it fails to unlock the door, the person just thinks that their fob, you know, didn't work or something. So they press the button again. On the second press, the roll jam device is programmed to again jam that signal and record the second code. But then it also broadcasts the first code. So that first code unlocks the door and then secures the second code, which is still usable um, because it didn't reach the car and because the first code was used to unlock the car, the second code is a part of the 256 codes that are within that window uh, for resynchronization. So it hasn't been used yet. It's a code that can be used. Now, the way Keylock has responded to this was to implement uh, something similar to something called RSA Secure ID. And RSA Secure ID is essentially a two factor authentication system uh, that has expiring codes. Um, some uh, are uh, 30 seconds, some are 60 seconds. It all, it all depends on uh, the, the way the system is. And so they call this dual key lock. So um, what happens with dual key lock is when a code is broadcasted, it expires after 30 seconds or 60 seconds. So that will foil the roll jam attack because even though the roll jam device grabbed a valid code in the future, any code that's sent out by the remote is and, and, and anything that the remote sends out is is a valid code, right? So because that code will now be invalid because the the, the time will expire because typically uh, when a roll jam exploit is being done, the person grabs the code and then comes back later in the middle of the night to use the grab code. Um, and uh, so dual key lock foils the roll jam exploit, but it is not in, 
it's basically in no cars. Uh, the only uh, car that I'm aware of that uses this is a few Cadillac uh, cars. Uh, but other than that, uh, standard rolling codes are used because they are still considered pretty secure. But it's, um, it's, it's technically been broken. So dual key lock is the newest system. It uses some of the... Um, the um, what, what would you call it? The uh, algorithmic um, parameters that RSA Secure ID authentication um, is is made of. Uh, so um, I hope that wasn't too technical. I hope uh, you guys understood at least some of it. I know I did get into some very technical language, uh, but it's nothing that you can't Google. And um, yeah, uh, so I hope you guys learned something. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. And if you have any ideas for videos uh, that you'd like me to make, leave it in the comments as well. And happy flipping.